Good afternoon. My name's Pastor David Effler, and I'm pastor of uh, Matthew 6:33 Open Our Ministry. It's good to be with you again this afternoon. I appreciate uh, you tuning in from time to time. I hope and pray that something that we'll say uh, down through this uh, series of messages out of the Book of Revelations. Uh, it's our intention, by the help of God, to go all the way through the book. It may take a little while, but. You know what? God has uh, always been faithful, and He's faithful to His Word. He's faithful to you, friend, the listeners out there in this world, uh, to bring you the Word of God. Now, I'm nothing, just a sinner saved by the grace of God, called to preach in 1995, and, and I thank God and praise Him for my call. And uh, uh, I learn something every day uh, in my life. I, my mind is always open. Uh, to the Spirit and the power of God and these things that uh, that we live and we learn. And uh, I stay every once in a while. We live, learn, uh, grow old and die and forget it all. Uh, but you know what? As long as we're down here in this world, if we'll submit ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ and submit ourselves to the will of God and be faithful uh, to that that God has given us, friend, you and I, uh, we'll always be able to prevail in whatever time and that we're living in. Uh, friend, the messages to the seven churches that Jesus gave to John uh, that went out to the seven churches in Asia at that time, now there was more than seven uh, dotted around. And most of these are uh, pretty close around to Ephesus. Ephesus was the place where that uh, uh, the, the I guess the head of the church was at that time after they left Jerusalem. And they came to they came together in Ephesus. Ephesus was a beautiful city. We talked about that, uh, a city of commerce, but it was also a place of paganism. Uh, and in one place, the the Bible, I think, or, or the Word of God calls it the center of Satan's seat. Uh, but also Pergamos, and this will be the one we'll be getting into today by the help of God in, Re in Revelation chapter two. We we'll start reading in verse twelve, and we want to deal with the church of Pergamos for a little while. And uh, this, the Church of Pergamos, this was about 300 and some years uh, for a period of time, there, a little over 300 years, uh, when uh, <clears throat> the church has just come through the, a time of great persecution. Uh, the Church of Smyrna was the church, the poor, rich church. Uh, they, were, uh, they were poor, not only were they in poverty, friend, uh, the world was uh, trying their best to, do, to, or Satan through the world was trying his best to destroy the church of the living God. This started all the way back at the time of uh, Stephen's stoning over there, where they, uh, you know, they chose them seven deacons and deacon uh, for the church, the early church. This is when the apostles were down here. Uh, uh, in the world, preaching the Lord Jesus Christ, the uh, death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Friend, the gospel has not changed. Uh, we're still preaching the death, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, our adversary, Satan, uh, has not changed uh, a whole lot, and he's changed a little. And we're going to get into that just a little bit here in a few minutes. Uh, but he is a very uh, subtile, uh, individual. Remember what he said over in the book of Genesis uh, that he was the most subtle beast that uh, God ever created down here on this earth. And when he uh, <clears throat> came to Eve over there, he came to her uh, and told her just exactly what she wanted to hear. Uh, now Eve was uh, created a, from Adam, taking a rib out of Adam, and she was to be a helpmate to Adam. And uh, uh, they got along real good for a while, but there come a day and time, friend, when Satan uh, came down into this world and, and he beguiled Eve and uh, uh, he used the very uh, makeup of her uh, body. You and I, we have uh, uh, seven senses. We've got, uh, you know, taste, uh, feel, sight, smelling, hearing. We've got all of these, all of these senses. And not only that, friend, but you and I, we have an instinct, the instinct to survive down here in this world that we live in. It's given to us, uh, and it's inherited. This, all of these things were inherited from our four parents, Adam and Eve, as, and, uh, and we still have them today. And, and friend, the world is hard to overcome at times. And uh, we're going to get into some things concerning the Church of Pergamos over there where that, uh, and uh, I'd like to call the the 
the heading of this little statement here, or what I'm fixing to get into, the birth of church and state. Yeah, and the first thing I know, the first question that come into your mind was, is there not to be a separation from church and state? Uh, yes, friend, uh, there needs to be a separation, not only a separation from church and state, but a separation from, from godly people and the world uh, out there. He said, Paul penned, he said, I'll come out from among them and be you a separate people. Uh, and uh, friend, we are to be a separate people out here in this world, John 17. Jesus said over there, he said, Father, uh, he said, keep them that thou hast given me. Uh, uh, he said, they're in the world, but they're not of this world, friend. Uh, when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, friend, you become uh, a heavenly creature. You become a, a child of God. Now, uh, the word Christianity uh, and the word Christian, now they were first called uh, Christians first at Antioch. Uh, through the Paul and them uh, stay over there for that they were preaching the word of God and the, and the Lord Jesus Christ and, and they adhered to the words of God. God was given uh, what we have penned today. He was given to them firsthand and they were doing those things that were pleasing in the sight of God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In other words, they, dis they demonstrated out there before for the world at that day and time, a Christ-like behavior. In other words, they were acting like the Lord Jesus Christ and they were preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and, and the works that he did uh, while he was down here on this earth. And uh, the church was growing by leaps and bounds. But friend, uh, I think that uh, as a whole today, the word Christianity uh, has got some black marks against it because of how it's been used and uh, how it was going to be used. And it started all the way back about 300 years after the birth, of, uh, uh, the birth death, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, friend. Uh, they were some things started creeping into the world. Paul penned in one place over there. Uh, in the, uh, the gospel, he said uh, uh, things creeping in. He warned them about things creeping into the church uh, at that day and time. And friend, it has crept in and it's still creeping in. These things that's coming into the church world today that God's not pleased with and every ungodly thing that you can think of. Uh, man is justified in his own eyes. In other words, that's given over in the book of the Old Testament. Uh, and uh, every man, I mean, you know, friend, I don't know whether you realize it or not, and uh, God will lead you to the water. What is the water? This is the water of life, friend, this word of God that he's got right here for you and I. Now, it's some hot. We've been having some hot days, and uh, I tell you, a good glass of cold water really tastes good uh, on a day like this. Uh, and, and I thank God and praise him that because uh, that we have the water of life, he said, uh, he told the woman over there at the well, he said, it'll be a spring, springing up unto everlasting life unto you. In other words, uh, the word of God is, is quick and sharp and powerful than any two-edged sword. By the help of God, we may get into that a little bit. I'll try my best to shorten it a little bit. I got carried away a little bit last week, but I can't help it. When the power of God begins to move on my heart and soul, I just trust that, uh, that God will give you the grace as you're watching this, just to, uh, to be patient with me and listen to what God says, not what I say, not, not, not what I'm able to do. Uh, friend, like I said, I'm just a sinner saved by God's marvelous grace, called and anointed uh, into a service of God, and, and I, take, I take this very serious. Uh, the word of God means a lot to me, friend. It does. It's 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 my life. It's uh, it's what I do, and, and and it guides me and it leads me through the power of the Holy Spirit. You say, preacher, are you perfect? Nope. Far from it, friend. Uh, you, you don't judge a man till you walk a mile in his shoes. You just don't realize, friend, uh, the foolishness that runs through my head uh, during the week and the things that happen. But thanks be unto God, friend. I have one sitting at the right hand of the Father. His name is Christ Jesus, the righteous, that's making intercession for me. And because I'm born into the family of God, through his precious blood, friend, Jesus and God looks at me just as if I had never seen. 
sin. Why? Because it's been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. He said he came into this world to forgive all sin. Brethren, that, that ain't just a handful of people sin. That ain't your, just your denomination's sin. Uh, friend, that's all the world uh, out there that he's, he, he forgave them. If they'll only step into this forgiveness. Now, it's something that's not forced upon anyone. Hey Amen. Friend, you can't live any way you want to out there in the world today uh, and expect to get into heaven. Uh, it just don't work that way. Now, TV and, and uh, a lot of the shows and stuff like that that's on TV, uh, they fixed it now to where that just anything will get you there, friend. Uh, anything won't get you there. If you're not saved by God's marvelous grace, if you're not born into the family of God by believing and trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus said over there, told Thomas, he said, Thomas, uh, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, he's the door, friend, and you won't go in any other way. The Bible says he that climbeth up any other way is same as a thief and a robber, friend. And I don't want to be uh, caught standing before God one of these days in the judgment uh, and, and, and hear these words, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Amen. Uh, I know him today and I know I call him friend today because he liveth uh, in my heart and my soul and he walks with me closer than a brother. You say, do you walk away? You're supposed to all the time. Why no? Uh, friend, does your children always obey you? No. Uh, do you have to bring correction into their life? Yes. Uh, uh, do they listen to your advice? No. Uh, they have to learn from the, by, by, by themselves. Friend, you and I, it's, this is, Paul said to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. How do you grow? Uh, you understand what's in the book. You learn about this man called Jesus. You learn about this lifestyle that God wants us to, to live down here in this world while we're down here. To be a light before a lost and dying world. That's what we are today. We're a light. Now they've changed. We've changed just about all the bulbs in our house. We've went from from incandescent bulbs to uh, these LED things, and I like the light. This bulb that you're shining over my head right now, it's a daylight bulb, and and, and I, you know, I like them. And uh, they're a little cheaper on uh, fuel than uh, some of the other ones, uh, or on electricity. Uh, but you know, what it is, it, it's a, it's convenient. Friend, the more you learn about the light, who is the light? Jesus is the light. He said, I am the light of the world. Uh, the more you learn about him, the more you'll understand, the more you'll know uh, what Jesus wants you to be. Now, let's get into the message. I didn't mean to be that long in my introduction this morning. Let's start reading with me, please. Uh, in verse 12, the Bible says, And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write these things, saith he, uh, which hath a sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou sittest, and where thou dwellest, sorry, and where thou dwellest, even uh, where Satan's seat is. And uh, thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days when Antipas, my faithful martyr, uh, who was slain among you, uh, where Satan dwelleth, but I have a few things against you, against thee, sorry, uh, because thou, uh, thou hast there them that hold the doctrine uh, of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. Uh, so hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which things I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto, church, unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, uh, and will give him a white stone, and in uh, the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth save he that received it. Amen. All right, let's get into the church this morning. Now, once again, uh, the, the seven messages to the seven churches constitute a time from the time that Jesus Christ rose from the de uh, grave, victorious over death, hell, and grave, uh, to when he comes again and receives the church uh, through the power of God. Friend, you and I, 
that are saved by God's marvelous grace. If Jesus Christ comes today and he calls the church, uh, you'll be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Your mortal body will put on immortality. Uh, the Bible says the dead in Christ arise first, and we which are alive and remain will be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. So shall we ever be with the Lord. You say, uh, you think that'll happen. As sure as God let the sun come up this morning, that will happen today, friend. Uh, and it's happening one of these days. And uh, you say, do you know when? No, I can't tell you when. The angels of God don't even know when. Uh, God himself, this is one of those things that God's kept to himself. But there's coming a day, friend, that God's going to get fed up with this world. He said, as it was in the days of Noah, uh, so shall it be when the end of time come. He said, men were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. And there was a lot of an abomination and things going on to the point where God penned in Genesis chapter 6. Uh, he said, uh, uh, man's thoughts and the intents of his heart is only evil continually. Friend, we're living in an evil world right now, and uh, and it's not only an evil world, friend. You can feel the presence of evil everywhere, seemingly like, uh, when you're out there. And you and and now there's a lot of good people. Don't get me wrong, friend. There's a lot of good people out there in the world that's struggling to get by. And and we're all struggling right now. And these things happening uh, that we don't understand. And we don't understand why they're happening. But friend, God knows. And before the foundation of this world came, uh, he knew just exactly what would happen uh, in April of this year. No, this is not April. My goodness, how spice times goes. This is June. Uh, in June of this year, uh, God, uh, God already knew, uh, friend. He knew what the temperature would be today. Uh, he knew everything about this day. He knows, friend. And also, if this is the day that the Lord Jesus Christ will come back, he knows the very instant, the time, the moment, the second, uh, wherein he'll say, son, go get your bride. And the trump of God will sound. And we're going home to be with the God, going home to be with the Lord. But until then, friend, time, uh, the things will carry on, and God's not lost control, friend, and not in any way. He said, over there, he that now letteth will let, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, talking about the Spirit of God, the third person of the Godhead is down here with us right now in this world, uh, God the Holy Spirit, and he's letting things happen, friend. Uh, just like it's a happening out there in the world today. We don't understand uh, the, the mind of God, neither can we understand the mind of God. Uh, but something happened uh, in the church world about 300 and some years uh, after Jesus Christ was resurrected. And this is the men of God. Uh, in the day and time, church had been through Smyrna. Uh, you know, they were told in the book, uh, the church of Ephesus, they had left their first love to repent and, and, and uh, to remember and repent. Then he tells them there in uh, the church of uh, Smyrna uh, that they were going to suffer persecution for a period of 10 days, but to be faithful unto death, that he'd give them a crown of life. And now then, that's the, that's the persecuted period of time. Now we're getting into a time where that uh, something happened. And uh, this is what the, it's been uh, prophesied. It's been written about. Uh, Paul warned about it, and the church has warned about it. You and I, uh, it's been preached, and we still see it happening. And friend, you allow it to happen in your very soul, amen, today. These things happen when you compromise uh, your faith on in any direction, friend. When you compromise your faith that's contrary to the word of God and you allow things to come into your life and you allow things to happen in your life, it's going to bring a separation between you and God. Friend, the Holy Spirit of God will pull back away from you. Now, I'm not talking about being lost and undone without a Savior. Friend, once you get born into the family of God, you're one of God's children till he decides to take you out of this world. If you understand what I'm talking about, uh, you may suffer down here. Be, the Bible says in the piece of scripture that's very simple, uh, be not... Uh, uh, be not mocked. I see. God said. See how does that go? Let me get him. Be not deceived. Uh, God is not mocked. 
whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap down here in this world. He's not talking about lost people, friend. He's talking about church members. He's talking about people that are saved by God's marvelous grace. Uh, he warns us that there is a judgment coming uh, to the children of God, friend. It's the, and if you're saved by God's marvelous grace, it's the judgment seat of Christ. You'll give an account of every work and uh, deed done in this body, every idle word that comes out of your mouth, uh, whether it be good or bad. We'll stand there for uh, there's a judgment. But one thing you can say, and you can count on this, friend, because you've got the blood of Jesus Christ applied down in your heart and life, you'll hear these verses, these words, uh, enter thou into the, into the rest of God. In other words, come on in, children. Uh, you know, you're forgiven. To, how are we forgiven this morning? Through the blood of the Lamb. Praise his wonderful name. Uh, we're, uh, we're forgiven. Now, let's get into this, or I'm not going to get done. This might wind up being a two-part message. But anyway... And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write these things, saith uh, he which hath uh, the sharp sword with two edges. Let's deal with that just for a moment. The sharp sword with two edges. What is the sharp sword that, with, that's got two edges? Uh, amen. Uh, Paul penned over there that the word of God, this is the sword, friend. Uh, you've heard people call it the sword of the Lord. Uh, it is the sword of the Lord. He's coming one of these days, uh, and there's going to be a sword uh, coming out of his mouth. He'll be and and he's going to and actually in Revelation chapter one, uh, it talks about the sword. Uh, it's in his mouth. What is that sword? The word of God, friend. Judgment's coming. What's judging me, friend? The sword of the Lord. He's coming, and it's sharp today. It's uh, it's got two edges. That means it's it'll cut coming and going. Uh, and, and the Bible says, and Paul said that, said that it rightly divides even down into the mire of the bone. Uh, you and I today, uh, we, this is a, a weapon uh, if the world wants to look at it like that. And I guess they do look at it like that, that, uh, that it's a weapon against them uh, because they wouldn't be trying to destroy it uh, if it wasn't a weapon against them. This judgment that's coming from the word of God Amen. Whether you're saved or whether you're lost. Now, if you're saved, you're going to the judgment seat. Uh, if you're lost, you're going to appear before the great white throne of judgment. And you will hear these words, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Because, friend, without the blood of the lamb, your name will not be penned in the book of life. Uh, amen. There is a book. Uh, friend, that was written when you was born into this world. But there's also a Lamb's book of life. The Bible says over there, the one that uh, that Jesus purchased on the cross of Calvary, and your name's pinned there when you accept him as your Savior and you ask Jesus to come into your heart uh, and save you. Now, let's get into this. Uh, he said, uh, he that hath the sword, in other words, they had the word uh, at that time. And uh, these words were, were, were handed down from generation to generation. They had the writings of the Old Testament. Uh, they had these things. Uh, they had held on to these things. They had held them dear. Even though persecution had been great for about 200 and some years, persecution had been great uh, in the church world. The devil was trying to destroy the church outwardly. In other words, he was using uh, emperors and rulers and, and people to bring uh, uh, persecution on the church, on the Christians, and he used these things. Saul of Tarsus. Let's look at Saul just for a second, and I'm trying to hurry. Uh, we'll look at Saul. See, Saul of Tarsus was one of the instruments that devil, the devil used uh, through the leadership of the or of the known church world at that time. Uh, through the Mosaic system and and those that had the, uh, the Sanhedrin courts and different things in that day and time. And he was an instrument to do what? To destroy the early church. What was he trying to destroy? Uh, this man called Jesus, and he brought a new and a living way. And he taught people that they were to love one another, to love their enemies, to uh, pray for them that persecute them, pray for them that despitefully use you and say all manners of evil against you falsely. Simple gospel over the book of Matthew, you'll find that. And he told them, over, you're the light of the world. Well, Paul came to distinguish, to extinguish that light. And God, he met the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus, and we know the story, friend. Uh, Paul said, what will you have me to do? And Paul went from destroying the church to building the church of God that we have today. And I praise his wonderful name. God can take old sinners, friend, and save you, and then put you to work for him and do great and mighty things through you. Amen. Amen. Uh, 
a, a verse of scripture, if, it, if God will bring it back to my mind, uh, and just a little bit, I quote it often as I'm a praying, and as I, as I quote that, you know, it, it, oh, it's in the book of Romans, he said, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you and I can ask or think. Now, when you begin to think about it, and I think about a lot of things. I do, and I think about a lot of ungodly things at times, and I shouldn't think about it, but God knows my heart. Uh, I was out in the world a good while before God saved me, and I was doing the work of, of my father at that time, which was Satan, and I was doing all I could do to glorify him and my lifestyle and the things I did, and, and uh, those times, you know, I did things I probably ought to pull time in jail over, uh, friend, but God. You know, God was looking down through the period of time, and I, and I thank God that one day when he come into my heart, my father changed from being Satan to the Lord God. And because he's my savior today, and because I, uh, he is my father, and I can cry father by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, we've been adopted into his family. All right, let's look at these. Now, the word of God said here that uh, uh, he said in... Uh, to the church of Pergamos, he said, write these things, saith he which hath the sharp sword and the two edges. Now, we've touched on that. He said, I know thy works. Friend, now, let's look at that phrase just for a second. I know thy works. Friend, be not deceived. God knows what you do out here in the world. God knows what I do down here in this world. And the Spirit of God uh, will bring conviction into your heart if you're doing that which is wrong, that which is contrary to the Word of God. Uh, friend, uh, God will bring conviction into your heart and soul, and He'll show you through the message of the church, uh, uh, through many different ways. Friend, if you, even if God has to take you to the woodshed and give you a good whooping, friend, uh, he'll, he'll bring it to your attention. You say, how does that happen? Uh, did you ever look up and say, boy, why in the world does everything I touch fly apart? Now think about that. Just think about that a minute. If you ever stop to look and see what kind of, what kind of shape your spiritual life is in, you know, take, take just a moment to look at that. Hey, Amen. If, if you'll repent and get everything back on the right road and get everything going straight, uh, the Bible says over there that, uh, that uh, uh, for the path of the children, uh, he said he'll knock the mountains down. Uh, uh, he'll level the playing field, friend. Uh, he'll take these obstacles out away from you, uh, and he'll allow you to walk uh, in, in, in the goodness of his love and his mercy and his great grace, friend, that you have down here uh, while you're walking in this world. Uh, but if you live contrary to the word of God and you, and you think that, uh, that you've got this thing, <laughs> yeah, we're just like children. You, you know, after a, when you start raising them little ones, you know, boy, I tell you what, their sweetest thing ever was from about, about, uh, from the day they're born all the way up till they get about two year old and they don't call it the terrible twos for nothing. When they get about two years old, they start being a little bit contrary. In other words, they don't understand what no is, uh, right yet, but they're learning. And that's when sometimes, uh, if you spire the, the rod, friend, now I'm not talking about beating your kids. I'm not talking about punishing them and hurting them. I'm talking about giving them a little spanking, just a little gentle reminder, uh, that you're in charge. Friend, God's given you charge over those children to raise them up in the fear and the ammunition of the Lord. Uh, friend, and he speaks well of, of spiring the rod. Over there, he said, if you spire the rod, you'll spoil the children. And you don't, you want to know uh, where, we're, where we're living right now? We're living in a world, friend, where that, uh, uh, uh Dr. Spock or whatever her, their name was, uh, told us that, you know, if we're beating our youngins and, and, and correcting our youngins, we're doing wrong. No, we're not. Uh, friend, my dad, my dad whooped me. Now I'm not talking about just a spanking or whatever. I, when he, when that belt would clear that last belt loop, uh, coming off of his pants, friend, I knew I got a whooping. You say, well, you, your dad was mean and cruel to you. No, he wasn't. My dad loved me. Amen. And, and I learned things, uh, because, and, and I'm like most men. And most little boys, they learn through the seat of their pants. Now, little girls, you can sit them down and talk to them, and they're hard to break. Why? Because they're made different than little boys. Amen. Uh, God give us a stubborn streak, friend. Uh, and, 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 and you've heard the old saying, snips and snails and puppy dog tails is what little boys is made out of, and sugar and spice and everything nice is what little girls are made out of. Uh, there's a little bit of truth to that uh, in, in a certain sense. 
Now, my, my son, he, he, had, he had to have some whoopings when he was little, but my daughter, I don't ever remember. Now, I may have. Now, she might tell you different today, uh, but I don't ever remember spanking her. If I did, it was a very light spanking. Now, her mama gave her a few spankings uh, uh, as she was growing up, but all I had to do was just talk to Andrea. Bless her heart, and her, her little heart break, and the tears had just rolled down her face. And she understood Amen. She understood and she learned the difference between right and wrong. Friend, you can't, you can't uh, let children raise themselves and spare the rod. And you can't let children go out here and do whatever they want to do, uh, till, you know, while they're, while they're growing up. They don't know how to grow up, friend. They have to be taught how to grow up. They have to have the right kind of teaching, uh, to, you know, for them to grow up right. And, and I'm afraid, friend, that uh, in the day, now, I, when I went to school, uh, friend, every teacher down there had a paddle. And friend, they not only had a paddle, but they had one with holes drilled in it. It would be aerodynamic, uh, in other words. And it uh, hit fit their hand well, and they knowed how to warm a seat of your britches if you done wrong. And they did that, and they not only did that because they, they didn't hate us. They didn't hate us, but what they was doing, they was learning us to respect our elders, learning us to respect. Now, I've got a friend. I grew up an acquaintance of my family, and uh, I remember one time when my grandmother took us down to the uh, to get a haircut, and if he hears this, he'll know exactly who I'm talking about. That's all right. It's the truth. Uh, and uh, uh, we was down there, and we had a barber at the time that now, but he'd give you a haircut in a hurry, and. Uh, they back years ago they set a little block. They had a little thing. He'd set up in the chair, and, you know, for youngins to sit on to get you up high enough to get a hair cut. And he could cut your hair in about two minutes, or just about it. And uh, especially us youngins, he'd just peel our heads and let us go. But anyway, we went down there, and uh, this friend of mine, uh, he he was pitching a fit, and he was t I mean taking him a, a thing. And that barber he he ran over there and he got him by the hand. He picked him up and he warmed his bottom just right real good, uh, and set him down in that chair. And he sat right there and folded his hands down between his knees, and he sat right there and just as still as he could be, and got a haircut, and got a haircut. You say, what does that have to do with the church in a period of time when they allowed things to come in? To the church. All right, let's read a little bit more. Amen. I'm talking about in the days of old, friend. It's not like that now. If a barber were to pick up a youngin and bust its tail and set it down in a chair and give it a haircut, he'd have a a, a a suit on his waiting on his in, in his mailbox before he got home. Now that's simple as that. You know. You know. I don't know why. I don't know why and what happened, but things have changed down here in this world that we're living in. We're living in the world of the offended. I don't care what you say, who you say to, where you say it at. Uh, if you don't watch what you say, first thing you know, you'll be sued. Uh, and and you know, and I might even get some of this cut off of you know the 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 uh, the channel that we're putting it out on. I don't know, uh, but I'm telling you what what God's put on my heart today. Amen. Let's look into this. He's, and He said, "I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even." where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days when Antipas was my faithful martyr, uh, who was slain among you, uh, where Satan dwelleth. Well, all right, friend, you and I are living in the world that belongs uh, to Satan. Paul called him the God of this earth, uh, not talking about, or God, excuse me, the God of this world. He's not talking about the big G God. He's talking about the little G God. He's talking about the one that was cast out, uh, friend, into this world. And he became uh, the prince of the power of the air. You and I, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood today. Uh, my quarrel's not with anybody that, got, that breathes air and has got flesh and blood. My, my, my adversary, Satan, uh, is as a roaring lion. He's seeking whom he uh, may devour down here in this world. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're at the Ephesians, Paul penned over there to the church of Ephesians over there. This is, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness 
in high places, friend. Uh, you know, our, our battle is with Satan. And as we lived our lives down here, Satan tries his best to get the upper hand. Now in the days of old, uh, under the church of Smyrna, uh, he tried an outward persecution. Now let's get on into this just a little bit. And uh, these people were living uh, in the very seat of Satan over there. It was a, it was a, uh, Pergamos was a place where that uh, uh, it was much. It was noted for its uh, learning institutions. There was libraries there. Uh, it was a place that you could go to be refined. It was a place uh, of, of of splendor. It was you know, it was a lot of beautiful temples there. A lot of them were pagan. Uh, temples of that day and time, and it's where the head of the Roman Empire was. Also, at that time, it was a place where the kings dwelt, and uh, and Satan was there also, friend. Satan has been in this world ever since God cast him out, and he'll be just exactly where you allow him to be. If you allow him to be in your life, friend, he'll be there. Uh, but all you have to do, he says, if you want to resist Satan, uh, call on the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You tell him to get gone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has to flee. He can't stand the blood, friend. He can't stand the word of God. Uh, this is our ammunition today. This is the sword that's got two edges. And it not only cuts the, the foolishness out of your life, but it'll cut, uh, it'll, it'll hack Satan all to pieces and he has to leave you. Now, he won't stay gone long because uh, you and I, we provide him a saddle to ride on. And you say, how do we do that? By accepting things in this world we shouldn't be doing. And uh, I'll tell you what, he, you know, it don't take him long to get his spurs back into your ribs. And when, you, when he does, then things won't go too good for you. Uh, as you live down here, if you allow Satan in your life, let's move on. And you say, can, uh, can a fountain give forth salt water and pure water at the same time? No, it don't work like that. The Bible says James penned it over there. He said the double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Now we're going to get into some things. He said uh, in verse 14, I have a few things against thee because thou holdest the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel and to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. Let's deal with that just for a few moments. In other words, uh, now let's say, first of all, let's, let's introduce Balaam to you. Balaam was a Mesopotamian prophet uh, in the days of old. And Balak was the king of the Moab people. And uh, the children of Israel, they had crossed over Jordan. They would come into the promised land. Uh, they'd fought the battle of Jericho over there and God let the walls down and they was a great uh, uh, possession of God's people coming across the land and God was walking before them and he was casting out the, uh, he, you know, he allowed hornets to go into places, he drove people out of cities uh, and uh, these things were happening and Balak had understood and knew that God was with the children of Israel. Uh, so he decided, all right, let's go down there and get us a man uh, that says he's a prophet of God and uh, let's get him to come uh, up here and to curse them. And because God's able to do that, maybe he will listen to, to the man of God. Well, first of all, friend, the men of God can't curse people. Uh, that's simple as that. You know, we don't have that power today. We don't have the power to put curses on people. Uh, we don't have the power uh, uh, to destroy someone's life. Uh, friend, we don't have that power. If you're truly a man of God, friend, and if you'll follow the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has taught me and you to do, the Bible says uh, to love them. Amen. We're to love our enemies. Uh, we're, we're to love each other. Love casteth out all fear. Uh, the fulfillment of the law of God, friend, is in one word, love. Uh, and that's, you know, God teaches us to love one another and to help one another and, and everything. Let's, right, let's get back to Balaam. I'm going to get off on another rabbit trail. Uh, he, went to, he went to Balaam and he said, Balaam, he said, I'm going to give you all of these riches. I'm going to give you honor and glory and riches. He said, all I want you to do is come up here and uh, uh, curse these people. Uh, well, Balaam saddled his donkey and headed that way. And then you're reading the word of God over there where the, the donkey tried to get him off of his back. And then after a little while, the, the donkey spoke to him in verbal words that you can understand. Can God donkey talk? That one did. Why? Because God spoke through him. Uh, and uh, the donkey talked to him. But anyway, 
Uh, he, he did not heed to the word of God. He didn't heed to the, to the verbal uh, speech that God sent to him through the donkey. But he followed Balak. And after a little while, now this is not written down what I'm fixing to tell you in the word of God, but somewhere or another, uh, you know, and I think three times uh, that he went up on the mountain and he tried to curse God. Uh, God's people. He even tried, but when the words came out of his mouth, he blessed the people of God. Uh, amen. God sent a blessing uh, through the words of, of Balaam up there on the mountain. Why? Because God wasn't going to let him curse uh, the people of God. Amen. And uh, But somewhere or another, something happened. Now, Balaam wanted the riches. He wanted the honor. He wanted the glory. He wanted uh, wanted these things. And sometime or another, he must have had a conversation. Now, this is not, it's not written, but he must have had a conversation. You say, how do you know that? Because there's a doctrine here. What does it speak of here? I have a few things against thee because thou uh, hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Now, I, don't, I, I can't tell you what the doctrine of Balaam is, but what it is, and he taught Balak Balaam did to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, friend. Anything, anything down here in this world, friend, that comes between you and God, whatever it is. Now, uh, it's warm weather, and, and if, you've, if God's blessed you enough to have a pontoon boat and, and, and plenty of leisure time, uh, friend, if you, spend, uh, if, you, if, you leave, if you lay out a church and you go to, to the to the lake or the beach or the ocean or wherever uh, like that. And, and, you, and, you know, once once in a while, uh, you can probably get away with that just a little bit. And the Holy Spirit, don't you know, the Holy Spirit understands you. He does. He understands you. And he knows these times we have to have a little recreation. We have to have a time to unwind. Uh, he knows that we have to have a time to get out from under the pressure uh, that this world brings on us. It's not easy, friend, to make a living down here, and it's not easy to pay our bills, and it's not easy to keep food on the table and insurance and, and all the things that's required of us. And, and, and what's one? But if you make a habit of laying out a church and you lay out all summer long and you go to the, and you go to the lake and, and, and you kick back in the shade somewhere or another, uh, friend, that, uh, that pontoon boat becomes a stumbling block to you and God will, God will take blessings from you. And, and I'm not saying that he's going to bury you on the side of a hill. Uh, he could. But what I'm saying is that uh, uh, the power that you could have with God, friend, he'll pull it away from you. And the next time when you finally do get back to church and you're wondering what's going on and everybody's having a good time and you can't feel nothing, uh, friend, it's because you need to find you a place of repentance some or another and say, God, it's me again. Amen. It's me again. Uh, why? Because you've allowed things to get between you and God. Now, that's a stumbling block. That's what Balaam did for King Balak, he told him, he said, if you will allow uh, the fire maidens of Moab uh, to go down in among them people and mingle with them and marry their sons and the sons and the daughters marry your sons, your young people, send them down there. And, and, and uh, he said, then you can begin to teach them your ways and you'll be able to get along with them. Now that's the doctrine of Balaam. Now, uh, the doctrine of Balaam has carried on from that time all the way to this present day, friend. The devil uses the world uh, out there when he allows uh, uh, the doctrine of Balaam to creep into your church and you uh, or to creep into these things. Friend, these men of God standing in the pulpits of this land, friend, across through here that has, uh, that has chosen the word of God as a vocation, in other words, a, a means of, 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 uh, of keeping their uh, family going, and there, there's a lot of them, friend, that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, they can teach you the word. They've been schooled in it. Uh, they've understood that. They have degrees. I've got an associate's degree hanging on the wall back there above my desk right now. Uh, my friend, I don't count on that. I count on the word of God. Amen. I count on the truth. I count on what God's get put down inside of me. Praise his wonderful name. Uh, uh, there's something in there that, uh, that kicks all of the stones out of my way, friend, as I live my life down here. Uh, and that's called the Holy Spirit of God that's living inside of me. Paul Penn over in Romans chapter 8, over he said, if you have not the Spirit of God, you're none of his, friend. There's a lot of dried up 
uh, 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 corn stalk preachers to stand in some or another high in pulpits across the land trying to do the work of God. You say, well, can people get saved? Yes, friend. First of all, I, I want to tell you something right now. God don't need me. Amen. This word will stand alone. Uh, it's forever settled in heaven and earth, friend. And this word will do the uh, this word will do the job. And if you've got a collie dog, friend, that can bark out the uh, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to where somebody can understand it, uh, friend, these be people who can get saved by God's marvelous grace. See, it, uh, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And when the word of God and the truth of God is preached, friend, through the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God, it'll bring conviction down into hearts and souls and people can get saved by God's marvelous grace, friend. And I praise his wonderful name that uh, they, they yell, they some qualifications for the uh, for the deacons and the preachers given down in the word of God. And, and I praise his wonderful name uh, for those qualifications. But friend, uh, uh, everyone that calleth on God uh, is not saved by the grace of God. I'll tell you that right now. You say, how do you know that? Look in the book of Matthew. You'll find it over there. Uh, that he says over there, them that come up before the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, look what we've done in thy name. He said, have we not prophesied? That's preaching. Uh, have we not uh, 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 done all these wonderful works in thy name? Uh, he said, depart from me, you work of iniquity. I never knew you. Now see, the, word, you know, the, the, the clue to that, he said, have we not preached or prophesied in thy name? Jesus, friend, is the power. Not who's spitting the words out. Uh, Jesus is the power. And the prophesying and, and the mighty works is through what? The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that's out there and uh, that's happening out here in this world. Friend, if anybody gets saved by the grace of God, don't thumb your galluses and say, look what I done. Friend, you ain't done anything uh, except uh, be obedient to the word of God. The word of God done the work. The spirit of God done the drawing. And God done the saving. That's how it works. It don't work any other way. Uh, friend, th th I love this precious word of God. It teaches me, first of all, that I'm just a big old zero with all the corners knocked off of it. And I, 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 I borrowed that from my, uh, a pastor from years ago. Amen. He said, I've got a few things against you because you hold the doctrine of Balaam. And then let's get the rest of that and then I'll have to stop. Uh, I'll have to just wait because I can't get into the rest of it. It's 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 bigger than it's bigger than me. Uh, to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, uh, and 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 to eat things sacrificed unto idols and commit fornication. Now, in the time of Balak and Balaam, uh, the law had been given, and the law was new on the hearts and the lives of the children of Israel, and the Levitical uh, the Levitical. Uh, uh, Chapter of the Bible over there under the Levitical, the Le, I'll get it out in a minute. Under the Levitical law, they weren't allowed to eat anything that was unclean. And they wasn't allowed to eat anything that had been sacrificed to pagan gods and to pagan uh, animals. Now, a lot of that meat that was sacrificed in them pagan temples, uh, friend, was given to the poor, and the poor would take it out into the shambles. What is the shambles? The supermarket. And they would sell that meat uh, to people. And, and, and if they asked questions about it, and they would have to say, tell where it was come from. But now the Moab people, now they were pagans. Friend, they were pagans, and they and they had pagan temples and pagan gods. And when they when they allowed this to come into the families of the of the Hebrew children, they brought their customs with them. They brought their customs with them. I made a statement just the other day. We've got a lot of people that's come into our area, and uh, I would to God that they could leave their customs somewhere else. Uh, uh, and, and some of the way, you know, they, if, if it got bad enough for them to leave where they was at, why in the world would they want to bring their same customs down here and, and ruin where we're at? I don't know. You say, preacher, are, are you precious? No, I'm, I try my best not to be and everything, but there's not anybody living down here in this world, friend. If you really search your heart, uh, that you're precious about a few things. Friend, I, I love my, the Constitution of our, of our United States and when people uh, try their best to destroy and to change things uh, and everything. I had, a, I had an uncle that was as close to me as any brother uh, that could ever have been born down here in this world to, uh, to my family. 
and he gave his life in Vietnam uh, so that I could have the liberty and the freedom that I have today. And that means a lot to me. And I thank God and praise him that there's still a handful of people out here in this world that still holds on to true Bible taught traditional uh, Judean uh, principles. Uh, and we hold the, 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 our, our country and our flag as something precious to us. Amen. We hold it down and deep the whole of our heart. And we're not only willing to hold it, but friend, a lot of the people that I talk to uh, has made statements that I don't need to be mentioning here on, on this broadcast this morning. Uh, but friend, they care. They care what's going on in this world today. And I praise his wonderful name. The gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was given to you and I. And when the devil cast his stumbling blocks before us, amen, let's trust God to kick him out of the way. Just what I said a while ago. I praise his wonderful name today. We're going to pick back up in this, and this will be a two-parter. I appreciate you. Amen.